Yo, what's up plant friends and welcome back to this leaf tutorial. I'm Robbie and today I'm going to share with you a really basic method to planting up an arid open terrarium. But before we get started, if you haven't already, you should also check out my basic method to planting up a tropical terrarium. That again is great for beginners, but this one is really good if you're just starting out and you haven't got the confidence in using tropical plants yet. This is how I started Loof by experimenting and playing around with cacti and succulent terrariums before building up my confidence and starting to use tropical plants instead. So, if you'd like to follow this tutorial at home, you're going to need some activated charcoal. If you can't get hold of it, don't worry, but it's really useful to have. I've got some tools at the front there. I've got some gravel for top dressing. My little tip is to use a, a aquatic gravel. I have then got my own potting mix, which is a base of coconut core. I then mix in grit sand, perlite to help with drainage and aeration. And there's a little bit of slow release fertilizer in there, but not too much since cacti and succulents aren't heavy feeders. In my blog, I mention this tutorial is for two five centimeter plants. Unfortunately, I have not got those supplies at home, but instead I'm gonna be using some little cacti and succulents that I've propagated myself. So I'm not really 100% sure on some of the species. I've got a little Apuntia micro, microdias, bunny ears cactus, um, and then these two little succulents. I'm not 100% sure, but I think there's types of hybrids. Um, I've then got some gloves just in case it gets a bit too prickly. I've got my clean vessel and then I've got my watering pipette of water to help the plants settle in. So you want to start with your clean vessel. It's also really important that you have an opening just because cacti and succulents aren't going to survive in an, in an enclosed vessel. So what I'm going to start off with is my activated charcoal. This is a little bit more important for me because my terrarium has a metallic base and I don't want my plants to be sitting directly on top of that. Activated charcoal is also really good. It's meant to act as a filtering layer and it is supposed to take out any impurities in the water. So I also do kind of mix a little bit oops, into my mediums as well. So even that out a little bit and there we are that's the very first layer and then we are going to add the compost and this is a really nice light airy mix you really want to look out for something that's got either perlite in it there's some other kind of materials which are really good so this is a mix of coconut fibers it's got grit sand in there it's got a lot of perlite and perlite is puff for volcanic rock and it is great for aeration i'm actually going to try and just dip this in i also Put a little bit of activated charcoal in there and there is a tiny tiny little bit of slow release fertilizer as well so i'm just really lightly the back of my fingers just compressing the compost even it out I'm not pressing too hard otherwise the plants are really going to struggle to move freely within that medium actually pretty pretty good going. I'm just gonna add in a little bit more. So you do want to be mindful not to overfill otherwise everything's gonna be tumbling out the front especially with my, the style of terrarium I have here. Plus cacti and succulents don't mind being a bit root bound so they don't need too much medium to be growing in as it is. So with this one, I've got to be mindful not to go above this kind of top ridge. Otherwise, all of the top dressing will just tumble out and fall out 
But there we go. This is really basic layering system. It's not really a laying, layering system at all that much. But that's to start it off. What I'm going to do as well is just give the sides a little clean down. It's always good to keep things nice and clean when you're doing this. And then you want to kind of think about the positioning of your plants. Now if you're struggling to pick out plants, I have got another great video on my YouTube channel that helps you choose plants that work together. For cacti and succulents it's a little bit easier since most kind of thrive in similar conditions but these are the plants I have been growing myself from some leaf cuttings so I think this is some kind of Echeveria hybrid but I'm not 100% sure. If you do know, let me know. And then I think this is maybe like a sedum or Echeveria hybrid. So that's got a really nice kind of purpley pinky colour in the sun. And here's a little Opuntia cactus I have been growing, or bunny ears cactus. So I will definitely be using the gloves for these because the spines are really fine and they get stuck in you. So as he's probably the most threatening, I'm going to probably be putting him towards the back and then have these kind of around. I have a feeling this might be a little bit more of a trailing species, so I'm going to try and place him at the front so he can kind of tumble out a little bit. But let's get into it. First, before we take any plants out of their pots, we want to make the little holes for them where they're going to be situated. So I'm going to be doing the cactus first and I'm just pressing down to that kind of activated charcoal layer and just opening it up nice and slowly. There we go. And I think it's time to put some gloves on and I'm going to try and get this little guy out of his terracotta pot. Okay, he like popped out. So he has actually got too much of a big root system. So what I'm gonna do, just really carefully place him in there. really really lightly secure him in okay right, next one so the next one I'm gonna be planting up is this little hybrid I'm going to go to the kind of side here, just open it up again, this should be a little bit easier since I'm not going to get pricked by anything this time around, and it's, oh, there we go, easing them out, just removing some of that old compost, I do that to try and stop any pests from being transferred over. I think it's good to give the plant a nice fresh bit of compost as it is. And since he's got a bit of a stalk, I'm going to try and push him a little bit further down if I can. Just open that hole up a little bit further if I can. Here we go. There we have it. Again, just moving some of that compost around to secure them in.
And then finally, I'm going to put the other one kind of here. And try and encourage it, if I can, for it to grow outwards. So this, I think, is maybe like a sedum hybrid, possibly, possibly. I did have an accident with this one the other day, on the other week, and he really fell over and almost snapped. So hopefully he's not gonna break today. Ah, uh, there we go. These guys have got some better roots. So the other ones, I'm just gonna break it up very, very lightly. I don't think all of that compost is going to come off today, which I'm fine with, because I don't really see any pest pressures at all. Or do I? I don't think so. But what I do anyway is I use some um, alcohol and I am watering a lot of my cacti and succulents just in case there are any pesky buggers in there and I don't want them. Again, just lightly pressing to secure them in place. And there we go. Just a little bit more so I can. I really want to cover all the new roots, so I might just put a little bit more compost in there. So we will be using some gravel for top dressing, but for decoration, I just like to use some polished pebbles and I just kind of place them around to make the area look a little bit more interesting. Just try and kind of give it maybe a little bit more of a lands landscape. So actually, I'm just gonna use those two. I'm happy with that. But I'm just going to try and secure that stone in. Hopefully I can get creative with this part of the tutorial. And then I'm just going to move this out of the way. And now it's time to top dress. So I find aquatic gravel is really good. For me, it's the right size that I like to use. It's not too fine, it's not too coarse. Sounding a little bit like Goldilocks there. So in my tropical tutorial, I explained this is just really good to keep fungal gnats away. But really for cacti and succulents, you shouldn't be experienced fungal gnats. So really this is just kind of for me to finish it off. So I'm just gonna move this around because I'm right-handed and I'm struggling. So yeah, you wanna make sure you cover the whole of the, the compost. Don't worry if you get it on some of the plants, we will get them out and clean it up afterwards. But just try and get as much gravel in there as possible to begin with. It can be surprising how much materials they can hold. I'm just going to use this tool to help some of that gravel around and this as well, this brush as well.
almost finished so last thing to do is to grab your watering pipette and give the terrarium a nice water so I am getting in and around the base of the plants and that's really gonna help settle in the roots and encourage them to reach out to the water I'm being a little bit lighter than I usually am with my tropical plants since cacti succulents aren't thirsty, thirsty plants. So, give them all a little drink and then I'm just going to wait for them to start soaking it up. And I'm just going to repeating that process a little bit now you really don't want any water sitting on to the top of these plants as that can really really harm them and there we go Let's see how the compost is really beginning to soak the water up. At the moment, I'm going to leave it there. And to really help this terrarium settle in, I've got some grow lights. So I think I will be keeping it under there for a little while just to carefully monitor it. It usually takes about maybe two weeks for them to settle in, but we'll see how it goes. And there we have it, my really basic method to planting up an arid terrarium. If you're wondering about care and how to look after it, I'm going to be following this video and these tutorial videos up with some care and maintenance videos. But for the meantime, refrain from placing it in direct sun for too long as the glass is going to intensify the light. And I would check it every two to three weeks to see if it needs some water and just expect that some of the plants are gonna grow a little bit elongated, um, where they're gonna be searching for that light, but that can create some cool looking plants. So, if you liked this tutorial and you wanna know more about terrariums, I've got my open tropical terrarium tutorial as well that you can check out. I've got loads of content coming out on my Instagram and my IGTV channel, so go follow me on there or find me on Facebook. And if you thought this was really great, you can either leave me a Google or Facebook review, that would mean the world to me. And if you'd like to support my business during this time, you can do so at my website. But yeah, I think that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you found this useful. If you are going to go to garden centres, please stay safe and take the proper precautions. And yeah, until next time guys, keep on growing. Bye!